<coughs> Zin for the win. Yeah, but it's it's like it's positioned. It's like uh, you're, you're focused on something outside of yourself as the reason to get there. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So like. Uh, a great example, like when you, um, in the gym world, they were big, those, you know, conferences, mm -hmm. uh, masterminds, workshops, weekend things mm -hmm. in the sales world, they're big too. But mm -hmm. like the, the, you always see a drastic uprising in motivation and work speed for the, usually the remaining like two, three weeks after one of those things. Mm -hmm. And then it just levels back off again. Right. Because it's, um, I guess the it's it's motivation's fleeting, right? It's and I think it's far more temporary than people think. Like the actual sensation that you're like the physical sensation of motivation mm -hmm. uh, dissipates way faster than people think it does. Well, yeah, um, like minutes. Uh, usually just wins the next <laughs> wins the next obstacle right huh. did you have you ever been on youtube and ever watched like those those like gym or workout motivation videos mm -hmm. like they, they you know it's like deathcore music with ronnie coleman <laughs> screaming lightweight baby i really like that one guy that's like big dog yeah they're coming up on your heels big dog yeah, yeah i like that guy but um <laughs> it's it's um I remember I had this guy that I trained with. He was just another weightlifter, and he would sit there on his phone like this. Mm -hmm. And he would literally watch them between, like, every lift. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. And he was, like, getting motivated. Mm -hmm. I was like, do you rely on that? Mm -hmm. He was like, sometimes, kind of. <laughs> I was like, man. In my head, I was like, that's that's – so fickle it's artificial energy right right you just you're just borrowing energy from right. from something right yeah well i mean discipline is pretty easy to categorize and, and to describe mm -hmm. you know discipline is creating patterns of behavior that are non-negotiable right so it, it's 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 probably my favorite quote from alex ever mm -hmm. Right is um, he doesn't directly correlate it to discipline, but I do, so I'll talk about it. But <laughs> um, it's about creating a sense around you to your peers or uh, competitors, whatever it is, that you are very good at what you do, right? Mm -hmm. And he, he talks about the notion of, of developing your self-worth or your confidence in your ability to complete whatever your job is or whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. and, um, he talks about the, you know, and he had business consultants come in and they would do this stuff with us. And it was, to me, it was like asinine, which I'm glad that I finally learned that he felt the same way because I was like, what the fuck are we doing? <laughs> you know, screaming affirmations in the mirror and mm -hmm. writing things down, repeating them to yourself, you know, yeah. at nauseum. Mm -hmm. um, his, his thing is like, why don't we just do this by creating an undeniable stack of proof within yourself that you are and can do what you say you can do? Instead of trying to convince myself I can, mm -hmm. why don't you just do it? Right, which I was talking to um, one of our guys the other day who's who's my summer roommate, and <laughs> he asked me a question of, like, um, we were talking about the storm season thing and it being different than he suspected and yada, yada, yada. And, and um, I asked him, I was like, what do you think the difference is between us or you and the guy you're competing with who has landed three times the amount of deals you've landed. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I don't know. 
foot speed maybe or we maybe they were out there earlier and i was like no joe we were out there i mean i'm sure there were some people out there at 5 a.m but who's gonna talk to somebody at 5 a.m and not be pissed off but um i said i need you to try to adopt the mentality um of just like a ridiculous amount of personal accountability and really soak in the statement of the fact that nobody's coming to fucking save you. Mm-hmm. Period. Mm-hmm. Right? He was like, well, how do you like push through when you're feeling unmotivated? And I was like, I don't feel unmotivated. Mm-hmm. I really don't. Like, I, I'll feel, you know, sometimes tired, mm-hmm. like physiologically tired mm-hmm. or worn out, stressed out. Mm-hmm. But it never impacts my ability to... Like, I, I don't have the gear in my head that's like, I'm just going to be lazy now because mm-hmm. this, this is hard. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, don't, I, I wouldn't say that I'm – I don't write off motivation or demotivation. Mm-hmm. Mine – I've set expectations for, th- for myself, mm-hmm. and those expectations are based off of how – what I – expectations, what, what I expect – to right. provide to the life around me what I've created. So I've um, reproduced. I've got children. Right. Right. I have a um, responsibility to them to provide. Right. I have bound myself to my wife. I have a res- responsibility to support. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, I have created um, a business in which there are, um, you know, 20 however many direct mouths to feed and all of the indirect mouths to feed in which I've also signed, you know, X, Y, and Z um, as the personal guarantor on every one of these accounts. If it (laughs) fails, it is my fault. Right. Right. You know, so, you know, I, I, I've, but I wouldn't have made those commitments had I not had an internal understanding of who I am and why I want to be that person. Right, and that's where my discipline is formed from. Right. So I'm, I'm. You and I share a similar trait, I think, as it's like. Um, there's a, a. I think it, I don't. I don't think it's from Rocky. I think it's genuinely just Sylvester Stallone talking about motivation in some aspects. But it's like, you just. He repeats the same sentence four or five times after a statement, and he's like, "We just, you just keep moving forward, mm-hmm. right?" And um, that is from Rocky. Is it's it from, from Rocky? Yeah, it's from. Uh, the end of the quote, the long quote of the. Um, it's on. I think it's Rocky Four. Okay. Yeah, but it's like I'm wondering if this just this thought just came into my head of of. <clears throat> It's very easy for me to operate that way, and it's almost like I have a set of pair of a pair of blinders on, mm-hmm. right? Where it's like all of these outside distractions just kind of ricochet off, mm-hmm. right? And it's just like I, I just keep moving forward. Yeah, I heard a really powerful statement. Um, I was listening to Charlie Kirk, and there, you know, he put it he puts out like forty five podcasts a day, um, especially <laughs> during the Republican National Convention. So it's like constant another yeah. segment for thirty to forty five minutes, but. I can't remember which person. I think it might have been Vivek uh, Ramaswamy. Mm-hmm. Anyways. Um, that guy's a hell of a speaker. I love him. I think he's amazing. So yeah. you know, go Vivek. But, <laughs> yeah. anyways, but anyways, he was talking about um, the the status, or like the, the condition of the world around it and the people within the world and how generally, you know, when you get to a, a culmination event, like, you know, where we're at right now with the assassination attempt of the, pre- uh, the president and, you know, we're, we're, we're either going to take this and we're going to unify and recreate the country mm-hmm. or we're going to completely implode from this point forward. Like, mm-hmm. it's literally, like, the stepping point, too. Mm-hmm. Are we going to fix it or are we going to fuck it? Right. <laughs> it, <laughs> yeah, that's what I meant. But I, <laughs> I was using Matt Taylor terminology, right? Yeah. But anyways, um, and he's talking about that, and he goes, you know, the, the, the powerful people, the people who need to lead are the ones who, when things get... The ones when um, things get so difficult and so hard that the normal person says that I can't, um, their rhetoric in their head is I must. Mm-hmm. 
plain and right. simple. And that's a really powerful change of terminology. Mm-hmm. Instead of I can't, it's it's like I will. It's not I will anymore. It's I must. Right. Right. And there there is no going back. It's burned boats type of men- mentality. And that's what we need out of leadership. So you need to be successful in any form of your life, regardless of put yourself in any any position as a person. If you reframe your mindset and you've dedicated to whatever cause that it is that you're progressing towards and you change your mindset to I must, then you will. Right. Right. It's it's like, you know, the the product of hard work is success. Mm-hmm. It, it instantaneously, there is no going back. Yeah. Right. And a disciplined person, that's what it is. It's like you're not gonna ride off of some artificial emotion. Right, you might you might catch some waves during the midst of it, where you're moving at a faster pace than even your normal standard and disciplined self is, because something good happened, or because this happened, or because you've got a team of people around you that are actually inspiring you to be want to be better, even better than you've already like forced yourself to be. Mm-hmm. You know, but that is fleeting, right? Because right? what happens when the team member is not there, the one that gets you all yacked up? You mm-hmm. know, if they're not there, so you're just not going to perform today, right? Yeah, I got to show up today, right? You know, it's like regardless of if you're here, you're not here. I must do this, and that therefore I will. Right. Mm. I'm wondering if the um, how much that that mindset for us impacts our. The thought I just had was was in that conversation that I had with Joe. Mm-hmm. I was like, man, I probably. I'm coming off as like uh, lacking some empathy. <laughs> um, so I'm wondering how much that, how much you feel that impacts that. It's really, I, the reason I say that is because it's really difficult for me to understand m- much different. Mm hmm. Like I, my answer to like almost everything is just work harder. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, that's the repeat theme, the through line of this entire podcast. Everything right. we talked about is if you put in the reps, right? You know, whatever you're working for is going to come to you, right? right. It, it, it is hard for me to look at it. Now, I've been in down points in my life. Yeah, you know, down points meaning you know I've lost my discipline, yeah. right? And but that was because I wasn't firmly grounded. Right. right? I was. I was not. I didn't place my needs and necessity for something in something worthwhile. It was something fleeting and it was temporary. Right. And so when that thing wasn't there any longer, then I wasn't there any longer. If that makes sense. Yep. You know, and so that's why I say, you know, I I think, you know, it's funny that Siri picked up when you asked that (laughs) question, but it's like one is fleeting, one is grounded, one is external, one is internal. Right. And you can become very disciplined and an internal thing, but in my circumstance, like in those low points in my life, you know, I was picking something that wasn't lifelong, right? So, like, envision the life that you want to have. Right. Reverse engineer that, break break that down to the, the mechanical steps, and then embed those things into the lifestyle, right? Whatever that is. And, but the, the cynical side of my brain is like, but so many people want that, mm-hmm. but then they reverse engineer it, and they're like, I don't want to do that. Well, that's why there's some winners and there's fucking losers, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm not, and I'm not trying to be an asshole or cynical or, you know, put people down for, you know, the errors they've made in their life, but it's like... The truth of the matter is, it doesn't matter how you, who you are, what race, gender, um, you know, family you grew up in, what per- neighborhood you grew up in. Some people have more opportunities right in front of them, and some people don't. So there are harder routes to it. But at the same time, everybody can progress. Everybody can progress. You can have mental disorders, and you can progress. You can mm-hmm. become better. You can, you know, focus on whatever it is that really drives you. And you can get better at it. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter who you are. I mean, that's all I'm really trying to get on this pulpit that I'm standing on. Yeah. Um, but most people, they don't know what they really want. They don't know who they really are. And they've been distracted by the world around them into thinking that they need to be something that's different. Success is defined differently from person to person. Mm-hmm. Right? For, you know, uh, for some people. And then actually, I mean, that kind of plays out with business owners and stuff. You see what their motivation was, you know, partway down, you know, through their growth and development as an organization. 
and it's it's embodied into the characteristics and the morality and the you know just the principles that they operate based off of and they start to find their friction later on down the road because it's very temporary because it's very superficial right right <clears throat> yeah if your your ultimate goal in life is to be a billionaire and you have a reason that you want to be a billionaire whatever that is and that's that's truly valuable in your eyes to go for it go be the billionaire you could do it right anybody could um it's going to take a lot of work, <laughs> a lot of dedication, a lot of reading, a lot of, you know, late hours and early mornings, whatever. Um, but success is defined differently. Some people, it's not that. Um, some people just want to see life from a different perspective. You know, they want the, the high-rise window office. And it turns out when they actually make it there, they realize it wasn't that all along, mm-hmm. right? So you do have to lot, do a lot of investigation. For me personally, I've learned, you know, when I was early in my professional career, my goal was to just be good at everything. <laughs> I didn't really have a direct a direction with it. It was like, if I'm just going to do something, I'm going to do it great, and I'm going to be the best at it. Whatever it is, it should all work out in the end. Yeah. And I went to rehab, so maybe that wasn't really necessarily the right way to look at it, right? <laughs> um, and But uh, having children has really redefined exactly what I want in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not saying everybody go reproduce, you know. I would love you know everybody to have the American dream, but it taught me something, and it was it taught me that my life is more than my life. How do, how do I say this? I am valuable in more than just a sense of being an organism. I'm mm-hmm. valuable to the world around me that I've created, and I'm bound and obligated and responsible for them. And right. no longer is it an option; it's an I must type of situation. And so, for me, success. Success is really easy for me to, to, to characterize now. For me, it's um, it's freedom, mm-hmm. right? If I if and and, and fi- financially, that is that is part of it, right? The reason I want this business to be so successful and for it to operate in such a well-oiled machine is because I want the freedom to be able to watch my, you know, um, watch my son play t-ball, you know, or. Um, jump in and actually go to tumbling class with my daughter or whatever. It's like I want to be able to drop what I'm doing and go to that without there be a repercussion. I that's, just want to see you in tumbling class. Right, so that's <laughs> that's freedom, right? And so in, in order to get there, I've got to dedicate the man hours that are necessary to create the mechanism that allows me to be there. Mm-hmm. And if I don't do that, I'm a failure. Right. Right. Yeah. I'm not a failure. I'm not going to be a failure. I must. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's funny because there's like um, – Every year we get the um, <laughs> the projected totals of the cost for my daughter's dance, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> and it's like comp- it's competitive dance, and she's very good, mm-hmm. and she's she's dancing in in groups that are um, two two to three years older than her, and she's. Last year, she was given the first her first opportunity to do a solo, and then um, this year she got a solo and a and a, du- and a duet. And um, her mom sends me this message, and she goes, "So the the projected total for dance this year is going to be this much." And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> "It's almost five figures, right?" Mm-hmm. And, um, like, real close. Mm -hmm. And um, after, like, the sticker shock, because for me, I'm like, I just don't have a comprehension of a memory, or maybe I was just too ignorant to it, but I don't remember extracurricular activities costing this much money when I was a kid. (laughs) But there's a reason I was a wrestler and not a hockey player. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Um, But it's... I have so much gratification mm-hmm. in paying for that, mm-hmm. so much, mm-hmm. right? Because for me, it's it's like seeing her at her competitions or going to her practices every week and, and seeing the joy that it brings her. I know that if I didn't operate or work in the manner that I did, then I wouldn't be able to do that, and what would I be taking from her, mm-hmm. which is like a hefty feeling right yeah it's like it's it's my responsibility to provide this yeah right and it's a um, lot of it's a lot of weight on your shoulders mm-hmm. it's a good thing you're really fucking strong but it, i mean <laughs> it's 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 it is weight but it doesn't feel heavy 
Yeah, right? it's a weight. I'm. It's a weight. I'm always happy to bear. Yeah, right. It's 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 not back breaking. Right. It could be for some. It's not going to be for me. Right. Because I because you do you get that return. Huge return. Right. It's like and and when I was in college, um, uh, I, I I was in the honors program and one of the most valuable classes that I ever took because they had us take at honors classes. You had to do other things and whatever, but the honors classes were the honors students from different bodies, you know, were whatever, professions or different areas of study. And you always had to approach it. For every conversation that you had, the whole class was discussion-based. And then mm-hmm. um, your job was to approach the concept you were trying to learn um, from that perspective so that you can all bring a diverse understanding from different worlds and come up with a ultimate, you know, middle ground right. comprehension of ph- philosophical ideas and stuff like that. And one of them was uh, um, um, altruism. Okay. We all had to write the, or read the book called um, The Altruism Equation, mm-hmm. uh, which is a great book, by the way, if anybody likes philosophy. But altruism equ- equation is essentially this, the same thing. It's different people from different realms of life all talking about is true altruism a real thing? Right? Is there is there really an act that you can give of service that has you get nothing out of? Right, you self sacrificing in some way, shape, or form, and you're not getting anything in return. Is it true altruism, or is it just is it just a thought and a characterization of a good deed? Right, that's deep. <laughs> right, <clears throat> and we settled on in our discussions on there is no true form of altruism because at minimal. On any good deed, there is always the warm glow effect. Right. Right. At minimal, right? Sometimes there's a lot more of a payback. I mean, that's mm-hmm. what the entire book of um, uh, The Go-Giver is. Yep. It's just like, you know, your net worth is based off of the difference between how much you give versus how much mm-hmm. you receive and that kind of stuff and the laws of stratospheric success and all that good stuff. But at the end of the day, you know, only payments I need back for the hard work that I put in is that warm glow. Right. I want to know. I had something to do with the growth, and this growth is better. It was a better opportunity than I had, right? Not to say my parents didn't do me justice. They definitely, I have a lot of character traits that I owe directly to them. I got to see them do their things, but at the same time, I want more for them. I want to create more of a bubble of contained success for those Mm -hmm. guys without the chaos of the world that is created. Right. So that's for me. You know, there's plenty of people that watch this who don't have any kids. They never aspire to have any kids. It doesn't have to be kids. It doesn't have to be a family. That's just my version of success, and that's mm-hmm. why I'm grounded in it. Right. So I can be disciplined to that all day long. I believe in it. Mm-hmm. Right. So do you carry? Because I know I do. Like I, I always, I, I always tell my daughter, I, I carry her everywhere with me. Mm-hmm. Right. And. Um, I don't regularly tell her this in the the in the sense that I don't want to give her a unrealistic or inflated sense of self, I guess you'd say, but like um you know, a lot of I would say that 90% of my motivation stems from her. Mm-hmm. Right? And um it's I have I have this I said it in here like, I don't know, probably three months ago, but I have this thing that rings in my head when I'm, I guess you could say, feeling uh, unmotivated, Mm -hmm. even though I I really, I would say it's more exhaustion than anything else. Mm -hmm. It's usually, for me, it's not a lack of motivation. It's like I I physically don't know if I can keep going. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, But I must. But I must, right? Mm -hmm. But I, I have this statement that, and I, I, like I said, I said it in here like 12 weeks ago, but it's, it's like, what, how would I feel if I just told her I gave up because it was hard? Yeah. Like how, how and, and like chew on that. Mm-hmm. And it's like. No, no parent really wants to say it out loud, but the approval of your kids when they're older is something you're always working for. Oh, yeah. Because mm-hmm. they don't know what's going on right now. Yeah. They'll piece it together over time, and then they'll mix in their own experiences and realize at some point, 
holy shit. Right. Yeah. I, I did. Yeah. I guess. Well, it's, <laughs> I mean, it's, you know. it's um, mm-hmm. Jordan Peterson says the, the truest, the truest um, way to define your success as a parent is how many phone calls you get after they move out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And um, the context of those phone calls. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, not, not just asking for things, but maybe asking for advice or, or just checking in on you. Yeah. You know, right. Yeah. So it's like, um, I, I'm, I struggle with (laughs) the statements that I hear sometimes of like, well, it isn't as easy as I thought. (laughs) And I was like, what, what the fuck is Yeah, right? like what worth anything is as easy as you thought that, I mean, that's, that's like, That's like old school stuff. Like <laughs> everything worth anything in life. Precious stones, precious metals, the things that people find valuable and they put this number on, whatever. They're they're forged in nothing less than pressure, heat, and friction. Right. Period. Right. Diamonds, gold, right. gems, whatever. Right. And so it's like, you want something good, apply some pressure. Right. You know? Yeah. Try. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, so, yeah. It, it's, it's like, um, that's, that's where I think I lack the empathy mm-hmm. is when I hear things like that. Mm-hmm. Like, in my head, what I want to say is, like, get the fuck out. <laughs> well, like, that, that's, that's what I was telling you about earlier today. Like, last night... I'm glad only one witness was here. So were you yelling to yourself? Yeah, but <laughs> it's just venting, you know. I just needed to get the words out. And there was only one person here, JD. Sorry, you sometimes <laughs> get the worst of, of me, but it's I tr- I trust that he's not going to take that and form it into something else. So yeah. I'm okay with that. But either way, it was like it was like back to back to back to back feedback or problems or dramas or whatever you know the workplace bullshit that mm-hmm. nobody wants to deal with right i talk, joke about this all the time i don't think i've even i've said it on the camera but like my ultimate like the the dream day as the owner of a business is everybody showing up doing performing their, their tasks and their responsibilities and going the fuck home <laughs> that's my dream day <laughs> but you know that's the dream day but that's you know you can want in one hand and shit in the other and see which one goes <laughs> up faster, you know. But um, but it's just ranting, and I had no empathy for the words that people were saying. It's mm-hmm. like I know I'm supposed to empathize. I know I'm supposed to, you know, I'm supposed to uh, hear people out and find ways to mediate and assist and remotivate and all that nonsense, you know. It is you know it's the, that's the that's the duty that you're supposed to have it. But every single one of these things that I heard was nothing more than a smoke screen. Yeah. It was like, how in the world is your performance, your performance, if I'm talking to you, how are you going to come to me, Ryan, and tell me that you're not doing well because some other person is pissing you off? <laughs> right. What kind of self-accountability is there in this person? Like, is it like, uh, this wasn't you, so viewers it wasn't him i was irritated with but it's like how are, how are you going to tell me that i didn't do i didn't do my job today because somebody else was here <laughs> and i don't like their face yeah you know or whatever yeah. like nobody said that like, you know, they said, change your face they, they <laughs> said plant one of these right in your they, hole. they said something <laughs> that made me feel a way yeah. it's like <laughs> it's like come on have some accountability to your actions it's like you didn't show up today um, in the right mindset. You didn't put your jersey on. You didn't understand that you have an obligation to yourself and to this business. You did not perform. It was not their fault. They said something that was rude at 9 o'clock and it ruined your whole day. <laughs> Are you kidding me? You know, like that. it, it just and, – and it was multiple parties and it was the same thing. Spun in different ways, but it was the same thing. I didn't do my job and it's okay because it was somebody else's fault. I probably would have been yelling and cussing too. <laughs> God, it's just like it's like get a grip on reality. Mm-hmm. Like I like we talk about this in in our meetings all the time, and it's like 
yes, we should do well checks. Yes, we should empathize. Yes, should we should understand, you know, people are not signing their life on a dotted line like they are for the military. They don't have to dedicate their whole life and be willing to take a bullet for the company. I get that, right? So, you know, we're going to operate with professional poise. We're going to make sure it's a good environment, good culture, all that stuff. But all that aside, nut up. <laughs> you, what, what, you, know, you know what I mean? Like business owners can, you know, in your, in, or previous or experienced people that live, you know, that, that, that make these types of decisions, you can, you can, you can relate. The, per, the, the opportunity in and of itself of having a job in the world that we live in should be something that you respect and acknowledge at all times with your actions. Should it or should it not? Am I crazy for thinking that? No, it's funny you say that because I, I actually <clears throat> expressed some outward frustration to somebody in here just in passing the other day. Because mm-hmm. I was, I had, I called 65 applicants mm-hmm. for a position here, mm-hmm. right? 12 answered and four said, sure, I'll come in for an interview. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> sure. I was like, I'll grace your, six, my, grace six, you with my presence. 65 people applied. Uh-huh. Less than 15% of them answered the phone. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, and of those people that didn't answer the phone, I always leave messages and send a text. Uh-huh. Three people got back to me. I'm like, why the fuck did you apply? <laughs> in my, like, in my head, I'm like, I, they're not feeling motivated enough in their job. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it, it's like, it, I'm like, I, I talk to people genuinely when I interview them. Mm-hmm. And, and I, through and through to my core, and genuinely feel this, that working for this company is a tremendous opportunity. Mm-hmm. I believe that to my core. And it's like, It's, it, it, what fed the frustration was that I've looked, I, I looked at our history of applicants in the last three and a half years, and and we've had uh, like sixteen hundred people apply for a job here. Mm-hmm. I've communicated with two hundred and thirty. Two hundred and thirty. Sixteen hundred. But it's like, what that I guess you know what that tells me is it's just like it, it's one people just spray and pray when they drop their applications off at these online sites, right? Mm -hmm. But two, it's like, uh, it's hard to find people that feel that way, that genuinely are like, this is an opportunity, Mm -hmm. right? This is, this is, I'm lucky. Yeah, it's, it's, you don't, I don't need, make sure it doesn't sound conceited or something. Mm -hmm. I don't need some like, come and rub my feet. I am the king type of response, but it's like, I've opened up a way for you to fuel your life. Right. Right. Pay your bills, live your lifestyle, feed your hobbies, whatever right. that it is. The only thing I'm asking you in return is to fulfill the requirements you signed on the line for. And the environment's pretty lax. <laughs> yeah. You know? So it, I, I don't feel like that's a big ask. I don't, <clears throat> I don't even think it should be an ask. Right. <laughs> it's expectation, I guess. Right. You know? But I, yeah, I mean, I would have, I, like I said, I would have been screaming and yelling too. I yeah. probably would have been like, because <laughs> there were times like that when I owned the gym that I, I, there, I felt like I was losing my mind. Yeah, it's like the things that are said. It's like, like I've mentioned on here a few times. Like every year, you progress, and it's a new new level, new devil, right? Mm -hmm. It's a new layer or a new type of problem that you're dealing with, right? But there's always those pesky little things that pop up that never seem to go away. And this this is the majority of of what the frustration was. It's like, how do you build a culture where everybody comes to the, to practice, to practice and to the game to play? Mm -hmm. How do you build that culture where people just appreciate that they're here and it doesn't really matter if they don't get along with one or two of their teammates. They still play the game because the goal on for both teammates is to get into the end zone. Mm-hmm. Right. So coaches can do it. We can figure it out. You know, but yeah. well, it's, it's, I mean, that's what, you know, I was talking to 
uh, Billy yesterday, actually, and he was, he, I said, um, you know, this job in, in its entirety is pretty simple, mm-hmm. right? I said, the most complex I deal with, the things I deal with day to day is personalities. Mm-hmm. That's it. <laughs> it sure is. Right? It's like my duties, <laughs> quote unquote, mm-hmm. are pretty simple. Mm-hmm. Right? It's executing and learning how to motivate, you know, 12, 13 different personalities Mm -hmm. to do the same thing, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, and then you have the outlier, and it's like, well, so-and-so told me out in the field that they didn't like this, so I don't like it now either, (laughs) Yeah, you know? And it's like... (laughs) One irritation is not a shared experience. Right. Yeah. But it, it's it. I mean, it is it is. Um, yeah, your your cup runneth over yesterday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? If we're gonna bring it back to this conversation, I didn't quit. <laughs> I'm not going to quit. I must succeed. Right. right? right. So yeah, I mean, if so, to to get to the you know the starting point of this conversation to reel it back in, because I always go down rabbit holes. <laughs> but it's you know. If we were to really deduce the differences, I think you're absolutely right. One is internal, one is external. Right. And if it is internal, it's a superficial internal desire. Right. right. It's not found it doesn't have a foundation worthy of building something on top of. Right. So starts with why. Simon Sinek is mm-hmm. a pretty good place to start, viewers. It's a phenomenal book. Mm-hmm. It's, it's incredible. And it's 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 like the, this is one of the coolest things about like uh, motivational speakers and um, people who write self-help books or, you know, that kind of stuff is the, the, the idea and the philosophy and almost every book is literally the same thing, just repackaged. Mm-hmm. And it's always very simple. Find something that you can't live without and make all your decisions based off that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, sprinkled in a bunch of other fluff that makes you feel good, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But that, that genuinely is, like, the, the motivating factor of, of I've, self-help. I've, I've, always, I've always said that, and I don't mean to demean anybody that's in those positions, but it's, like, pastors, coaches, self-help book writers, motivational speakers, it's all repackaged information. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing from a different personality mm-hmm. point. Right. It's reaching whatever their their niche market is. Yep. Right. Now I'm de- I'm definitely not at all saying that, you know, like religion is bad or this or that. Obviously, I'm a devout Christian. Mm-hmm. We talked about this, but it's like, if everybody's saying the same thing, shouldn't maybe we all start listening? Yeah. There's some <laughs> might be something to it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you got anything else you want to point into this topic? Well, Lachlan brought in, if you guys can hear, is uh, breaking down um, necessity as part of your disciplinary foundation. Mm-hmm. Maybe is the right way to say that. Um, I think that's a mindset shift for in a first world country. That's a mindset shift, mm-hmm. right? It's like you have to you have to subscribe to the idea that if you do not do this, the life as you know it is over. Mm-hmm. Right, um, the life that you want, the life that you have, neither of them exist without the discipline mm-hmm. that's required. Um, in a third world qu- country, it's a different, but it is a very powerful visual. Right. Yeah, I, I think that. I, I mean, I've been fortunate enough to to travel to quite a few third world countries. I've been. Um, to some pretty bad areas in Brazil, Honduras. Um, there's s- some very third world country esque places in the United States, mm-hmm. um, but Mexico. Um, I don't. I don't know if they'd comprehend motivation. Truthfully, because I I don't, you know, I've seen in, for instance, in in Honduras, I saw 
six-year-olds working mm -hmm. in the family unit, right? Mm -hmm. But but doing their part, whatever right. their part was, mm -hmm. right? Um, in the chain to either, like what Lachlan said, to either eat mm -hmm. or stay safe or stay warm, mm -hmm. whatever that is, right? I think that a lot of them would laugh at the fact that some of us need motivation to do those things. <laughs> Truthfully. I, they, would, they would laugh in a sense that it's like, um, how, can you, how can you be so, how could your entitlement convolute the world so much? Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, they would laugh. It's like, in, in their scenario, you do it or you die. That's it. Simple and straightforward. It's pretty. It's a pretty easy thing to make that decision to get up and do the job, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Right. If I don't do this, I will die. Right. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, and well, and you know, very grounded and fundamentally disciplined humans in areas where it's not actually do or die, treat it that way. Yeah, I was going to say, is it a little skewy and unhealthy of my brain to just think of it that way anyway? No, I think it's actually the right way to think about it. Right? I mean, like, I, I look at everything that's meaningful in my life, first and foremost, recovery, mm -hmm. right? I literally tell, like, sponsees I work with, mm -hmm. it's like, you do this or you die. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. Right? The only other option is that you would go to jail, right? But death you may institutions or jail. Yeah, you may as well consider that death as, life you, as the life you know now, right? Because mm -hmm. it is, right? But, like... It's death of freedom. It's that with my recovery. It's that with the the work that I do with my psychologist on my own shortcomings and character defects. It's like if I don't want to keep living this way, right, then I have to do what's necessary to change or I'll die. Mm -hmm. And I might not die, mm -hmm. like my heart stops, but part of me will die, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If I don't, I, I can't even comprehend the feeling of putting my daughter in a situation where she's not safe, healthy, happy, full stomach, mm -hmm. smiling, having freedom, mm -hmm. right? I would want to die, mm -hmm. truthfully. It's like I, like I don't, to me, those things kind of correlate. It's like the, yes, if I was living in a third world country and I lived on very minimal income, and you know, very low quality food, and there was 17 family members living in one shelter. Mm -hmm. The stakes are higher, mm -hmm. in a sense, mm -hmm. right? But I think that it's—I don't know—I think that it's appropriate to act as if the stakes are that high. Yeah, I think a good visual. Um, the necessity for whatever in a third world country versus choosing to be disciplined right is like in order to be disciplined and to do it the right way and not let it be fleeting like a mo like motivation is you have to make a conscious decision to burn the boats right there is no return it's this or it's nothing right in a third world country you never had a boat to begin with right right yeah so how'd that go Lachlan pretty good <laughs> yeah well, it, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I think that, and I know there's a few people here that operate this way because it's kind of like an unspoken kinship mm -hmm. that you can kind of just sense. Mm -hmm. um, but it's like, uh, you know, I, I mentioned on here a few, a few weeks ago, my daughter saying like, thank you for working so hard. Mm -hmm. And it's, Sometimes it's hard for me to uh, like receive that because mm -hmm. I'm like, I what do you mean? Mm -hmm. I don't know any other way. Right. 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 It's like I since I was very young, that's it's the 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 one thing that I have the utmost gratitude to my dad for. Mm -hmm. Just like that man teached me disgusting work ethic, mm -hmm. and it's like if you do something, you do it all the way. And then some. Mm -hmm. And if you're working with people, then you do the job better than they're doing it. Mm -hmm. And if you're trying to learn something, you learn faster than people next to you, mm -hmm. right? 
and it's like that it's burned into me mm -hmm. so it's like when people are like wow you work so hard i'm like i, f I kind of feel like i'm barely working yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like if i feel like i had, could get so much more done yeah well the compounded effect of a life of discipline right. is that you become efficient in being disciplined right right you eventually right. create freedom that's what jocko is talking about all the yeah. time right it's like you've been disciplined so well in your life that perceivably to the outside it's like you're not trying anymore right mm -hmm. right <laughs> then you're still and you're reaping the benefits on a compounded uh, right. level yeah. <laughs> you know so yeah. well um i think that's probably a good stopping yeah. point yeah. um so you know the, the i guess the call to action for all you guys out there um in this particular conversation is bringing it back to an old topic it's let's do a little bit of uh investigation to ourselves Mm -hmm. Let's find out if what's uh, driving us forward is going to be fleeting or not. Is it superficial or is it deep down inside of you and you can't live without it? It's like the blood, right? It's a glowing ember. Yeah, right? <laughs> um, and then also uh, when you've discovered that, maybe acknowledge the people that have been in your life that have taught you that. Mm -hmm. So um, that's it for today. Thank you guys for tuning in to Into the Lion's Den. Um, we appreciate your support. Um, please like and subscribe, engage in the content, ask us some questions, and uh, we'll be back next week with another one. Did you hear the news? Sorry. Uh -huh. Zinn is building a uh, six million square foot <laughs> manufacturing facility in South Denver. In South Denver. And it's going to employ like 20,000 people. All right. You know why? Because they're so short on all of their, they're like, we just have to make more. Uh -huh. <laughs> so Zinn, we're, we're so close. <laughs> Shoot us over a sponsorship. Yeah. Get, some, uh, get some Zins, <laughs> Zins in the upper decky. And hope, hopefully Zins. And hopefully Zins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah, if you're watching, bring us some goodies. Yeah. But, Anyways, appreciate your your love and support. Catch you next time. Why don't we talk about the difference between motivation and discipline? Motivation is the reason or desire to do something, <laughs> while discipline is the ability to. I didn't even know which one it was. Oh, yeah. <laughs>